So in this video, we are going to be looking at Pascal's triangle and its connection to combinatorics. It's a special branch of math in order for us to prepare for the binomial theorem. So hopefully you have already seen Pascal's triangle. We could spend days talking about all of the cool patterns that we see in this triangle. But for today's purposes, we really just want to make sure that we can answer one question. And that's how do you get the next row of the triangle? if not any row, okay? So let's jump right to it. I'm hoping that we can see that each row starts with a one and ends with a one. But to get these numbers in the middle here, you're actually gonna do some adding. It's very simple. We're going to add two numbers in the row above together to get the next row. So see how we did that? We did one plus seven to get eight, right? And I could keep doing this. I could do seven plus 21 to get to 28. Now notice that Pascal's triangle has symmetry. So once you get to the halfway point, you already have done the adding for the rest of it. So I only have a few more things to do here. So 21 plus 35. That is 56. 35 plus 35 is 70. And there we go, we've hit the halfway point. So now we know this one's gonna be 56. The next one's going to be 28. Eight, and then the one there, right? So. It is fairly simple to get to the next row. Before we talk about the, the connection that this has to combinatorics, I do wanna make a few notes here um, about how we describe the different parts of this triangle, just so that we, when we say something like the row that, that we're looking at, that we all are on the same page. So we always call the first one here, that's just the one, we call this row zero. Right? And that way, it works out nicely with some other things that we're gonna do, but it also is gonna make it easier to talk about. So for instance, in the row that we just found, right, that has the eight in it, we know that that's going to be row eight, okay? Look, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's the, the notation we're gonna use for that. We're also going to say that this is the zero th term in row eight, right? Which would mean that this is now the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, eighth term. So every row, right, if I know the row that I'm in is telling me how many numbers will be in that row. So this is all well and good if we want to sit here and make out the whole triangle. But if I wanted to get to say the 100th row of the triangle, that would be really annoying. And that's because what we are doing right here, right? The idea of adding the two terms above to get to the one below, right? This is called a recursive rule. It means that we need the previous row to get the next row. Recursive rules are why this is an annoying. We don't like to work with recursive rules. So let's think about a more important question. How do I get any row of this triangle, right? We're gonna need to know some other stuff before we do that. We will come back to this idea though, I promise. So here's where combinatorics come in. So what are combinatorics? They're a branch or an area of math that is concerned with counting. It really is just about counting, specifically the number of different outcomes. So that might be a little confusing still to you. So let's break that down. Think of situations where you've been asked to choose things out of a set Maybe there are five shirts 
and you need to choose three of them to take on vacation with you, right? This is the type of question that, that common torques would be interested in solving. So there's two types of questions in common, in common torques, ones where order matters and ones where order does not matter. So let's just break down that situation. Order mattering, let's think of an ice cream cone and you get to pick your flavors of ice cream. The way that they get stacked on the cone, right, is going to decide the order in which you eat this ice cream. So an ice cream cone is a situation where the order of those scoops matters. When order matters, we would be doing something called a permutation. When order does not matter, that is called a combination. Now notice it, the study of, of, of counting here is called combinatorics. A combination is a very specific type of question within combinatorics. So when order doesn't matter, if we stick with this ice cream example, think of your ice cream being put on a plate or in a bowl, right? Now you have all of the ice cream at your disposal, right? It doesn't matter where in the bowl I put those scoops, I have full access to any of those scoops at any time. Therefore, we have a difference, right? Here, the order of the scoops getting put in the bowl does not matter because it would be giving me the same bowl. Whereas the order of the ice cream on the cone is going to change my ice cream eating experience, okay? So we could take a whole class about combinatorics. We just need a little mini lesson right now. And we're just going to focus on combinations. That's going to help us see something nice about Pascal's triangle. So in combinations, think of a, a question like this. How many different bowls of ice cream could you make? Let's say if you had five different flavors to choose and you were picking three different scoops to put in that bowl. Okay, that is the type of, of um, question that we'd be working with when doing a combination. Now we're not gonna be doing these questions when we're doing the binomial theorem, but we are gonna be doing the math that you would uh, do to solve that question, which is kind of interesting. So let's talk about that math. So how do you calculate a combination? You need two things. The first thing we're gonna call N, that's gonna represent the number of items in the set, okay? The number of things you're choosing from. We're also gonna use R, which is the number of items you're choosing, right? The ones that get chosen from that set. We are going to now use this notation right here with these parentheses to mean we are given N things to choose from and we are choosing R of them. You actually read this as N choose R, okay? Now, let's talk about this formula. What are exclamation points doing in math class, you may ask? An exclamation point is called a factorial. Oops. What that means to do is to multiply that number by every integer less than that number so the next number down would be one less. Next number down would be two less, right? You would keep doing that until you get to one. All right, we're gonna do an example. So you will see what, I, what this actually looks like with a number in there, but a factorial is a multiplication problem. All right, so let's go back to our question here. How many different bowls of ice cream could you make if you had five flavors to choose from? So those are the number of items in our set. We have five flavors and we want three different scoops. That means we are choosing three of those flavors. So we just found out our N and our R from that problem. So here we go. Five choose three. We are going to plug the five, which is n, into the top here. So we get five factorial. 
In the bottom, we're going to plug in the R, so the 3, 3 factorial. And then the next part of the formula says to take N and subtract R. What that's saying is you chose three things, you didn't choose two of them. I have to think about this. I actually looked this one up before I wrote it down just to make sure I was writing it down right because I don't think in terms of formulas. I like to think in, in terms of ideas. So I've always thought of this as the total number of things factorial, two things go down here, the things you're choosing and the things you're not choosing. You're splitting them up into two different groups there. Okay, but that is the formula um, that gets you to this. Now we have to do this calculation. So here we go. Remember, factorial is to start with that number. So I'm going to start with 5, and I'm going to go down by 1 each time until I get to 1. That's a big multiplication problem. Now down here, same thing. 3 factorial, I start with 3, go down by 1s. 2, 1, I stop. 2 factorial, 2, 1, I stop. There is multiplication between these, so I'll put a little dot there. Please don't do all the multiplication. Let's do some simplifying first, okay? For goodness sake, please. All right, uh, let's see if we can get rid of these twos here. These threes. Uh, four can get divided by two, that becomes two. And I think we're good, right? All these are just ones, goodbye. That means that we now have a five times two in the top and we get 10. So that says that we can have 10 bowls different bowls of ice cream that would have three scoops each, each different scoop, if we were choosing from five flavors. Now, remember, that's not the question that we're really focusing on. What we were focusing on is calculating this because that's what we are going to need to do for binomial theorem. All right, so what does this have to do with Pascal's triangle? Well, we wanted a way to get any row of this triangle. Check this out. It turns out that every one of the numbers in this triangle is a combination, but not just any combination. They happen to get grouped up in their rows. Look at this, what this is saying, right? Remember, we just found this one here. What this is saying is that row five has every combination where you start with five things to choose from. You go from not choosing any of them. That's one way you can choose that. I'm not choosing them. Five things, but choosing one flavor. Oh, I can do that five different ways. Five flavors, choosing two of them. I can do that 10 ways, five ways, uh, sorry, five scoops, choosing three ways. We just did that, we found 10, right? All the way up to, well, what if I had five flavors and I chose all of them? We're back to one option of doing that. So look at this format. Now, N is the row, right? And R, is the term in that row. So if I wanted to get, let's say the eighth row right here, right? I know that I could do the adding here. That's easy to do. But what if I wanted the 80th row, right? The 80th row, oh, that's really annoying. I'd have to draw these all out. Nope, 80th row, I gotcha. We put 80 here. 0, 80 here, 1, right? We would go all the way up until we get to 80, choose 80. And that is going to be helpful for the binomial theorem because we're going to need rows of this triangle. Good luck with the binomial theorem.